So Tim Geithner comes out this morning and says, um, you know, fiscal cliff. Now, remember, the Republicans had said, if you'll do this deal and you'll cut Social Security and basically if you Democrats will shoot your Santa Claus and destroy yourself politically, uh, we won't hold the fiscal cliff hostage come spring because everybody assumed it was going to be January, February, March, April, something like that. And <laughs> there's two, two important things to know about this. The first is if the Republicans hold the fiscal cliff hostage, not the fiscal cliff, I'm sorry, the debt ceiling, the debt ceiling. In fact, there's three important things you need to know about this. The first is the debt ceiling. You're going to hear, you know, Limbaugh and Hannity and all the other right-wing bloviators, the, the multimillionaire right-wing bloviators, uh, pointing out or saying or suggesting or basically lying to you that raising the debt ceiling allows the president to borrow and spend more money. It does not. Only Congress can borrow money. Only Congress can spend money. Only Congress can raise taxes. The president doesn't have any of those powers. The president does control the executive branch, which includes the Treasury Department, and the Treasury Department writes the checks that pay the bills that were run up by Congress. So you got these bills that are coming due. You know, the defense contractors here in town, these guys who live in these 30-bedroom mansions that ring the, ring the city, we've got the, the most affluent zip code in the United States, just 20 miles from me here in the center of Washington, D.C. It's, it's, it's out in suburban Virginia, um, you know, where, where in gated communities and every house has, you know, some of them have helipads, you know. I mean, it's, it's like these are, this, these are the billionaires, right? This is a, another world. And they've, you know, they, they got their multi-billion dollar contracts from George W. Bush for the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. And they sent off, you know, average working Joes that they paid a hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars a person for two, and that they build you and me a million bucks, a million and a half bucks, three million bucks a person. And they're now submitting their bills to the government and saying, "Okay, you know, Congress said yes, Bush said yes, Bush signed the legislation. We'd like to be paid." That's what the debt ceiling is all about. It's about paying off. Past bills, previous bills. So, number one, the debt ceiling, raising the debt ceiling does not give the president, does not give President Obama any authority whatsoever to borrow money or spend money. Period. As I said, anybody who tells you that is either A, lying, or B, mind bogglingly ignorant and has clearly never read the Constitution. Because Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution makes it very clear that the only branch of government that has the power to spend money is Congress. The Supreme Court can't do it. In fact, if Congress cut off the Supreme Court's budget, they'd have to meet in the Lincoln Diner down the street, which is this nice little place where you can get grits and eggs for $3.20. It is, it's one of my favorite breakfast places because I love grits. And, uh, but it's like, Supreme Court can't appropriate their own money. Congress has to give them a budget. If, the, the Cong if Congress cut off the budget for the White House, I said, sorry, no more White House. You know, Barack and Michelle would have to, I don't know, they could, they could move on to the boat with Louise and me. I don't think we have room for the dog or the kids, though. I mean, you know, living in a boat is like living in a little trailer. It's a little tiny space. But, you know, yeah, there's Secret Service guys. I don't know. The boat next to us is only, he's a lobbyist, actually, owns the boat next to us. And he only uses it once in a while and has some, uh, I don't want to get into that. Anyway, <laughs> the, the, the things you learn. Um, but in any case, the president doesn't have the power to raise money, borrow money, spend money, and he, all he can do is sign the checks, or the Secretary of the Treasury, Tim Geithner, can sign the checks. All the way back to Alexander Hamilton, this is how it's always been. Supreme Court doesn't have the power. Only Congress has the power. So A, either they're lying to you, or B, they don't know what they're talking about. And then on top of that, the 14th Amendment says very clearly, the full faith and credit of the United States shall not be questioned. Now, granted, this was a left, this was Congress's way of saying that the Union, that the Northern states will pay off the bills from the Civil War. That's why it was put into place. That's why, that's why that, you know, article, I think it's Article 4 of the 14th Amendment was, was put into place. 
but it has it's still it's the law right i mean it's it's part of our constitution the validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law, including debts incurred for payment of pensions and bounties for services and suppressing insurrection or rebellion, shall not be questioned. The debt ceiling questions it. It says, sorry, uh, Mr. Geithner, you can't write those checks. So it's unconstitutional. Another thing you need to know about it. But the most important thing you need to know about it is that when the Republicans held it hostage last year to force Obama to cut the number of weeks of extended unemployment benefits that that working people got, not billionaires, not the Republicans in Congress, but working people got from 99 weeks down to 74 weeks. When they did that, they almost tanked the world economy. They crashed our stock market. They hurt our faith in credit. Standards and poor's lowered our credit rating. And they will do it again if the Republicans try to do this again. And frankly, in my opinion, the Republicans shot themselves in the foot. They, the Democrats, for the House of Representatives in total, got a million more votes than the Republicans did in the last election. Obama won by a landslide. The Republicans lost seats in the Senate. You really think they're going to play that game again? Frankly, I think the answer is yes.